So the day that we have been waiting for for a very long time, my friends, is finally here. Hogwarts Legacy is now live, depending on where you are in the world. Therefore, in today's video, I wanted to take a few minutes, go over some beginner details, and more importantly, answer some of the questions you've sent the channel. What's up my YouTube family? Welcome back to the Gaming Brigade and the first thing I want to make sure I mention is that this is going to be a spoiler free video. I just want to go over a few beginner details that should hopefully get you started when you jump into the game. Now if you happen to be new here, feel free to hit that subscribe or join button. If you enjoyed this you could hit that like button as well and remember we are currently having a giveaway for a PlayStation 5. To enter all you need to do is subscribe here or follow on Twitter and the winner will be announced May 4th of this year. So there happen to be a lot of details I'd like to go over in this video, and if you have any questions that I do not touch base on, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will get back to you as quick as I can. Now the first thing I want to go over, and this is a question a lot of you have sent the channel, is you were wondering if you could have multiple saves in the game and simultaneously play as different characters. The answer is absolutely yes, you can see here. I already have three characters created in the game. My main character is at level four. I've picked Gryffindor for that character. I intend tend to have one character in each house because as the game has said, the house that you choose can and will have an impact on the look and feel of some of the main missions and side quests as well and I know for a lot of you out there you want to experience this game as many different ways as you can and having the ability to play a character from each house allows you to have a completely different story arc between your characters depending on what decisions you make in the game. I've talked to gamers out there who've already started one character, they play for three hours and they bounce to the next one and in my opinion that's one of the best things about this game is that you can truly just enjoy yourself and have fun with it. Now that brings me to another question you've sent the channel which is does it matter if you do the main missions in combination with the side ones? Can you lose out on anything if you just go through the main story? And the good news is that all of the side quests will be available at the end of the main missions as well. So let's say if you decide to speed run the main missions you may run into a little issue where your character may be a little underpowered when you get to certain things. But for those of you that have the concern on missing out on something if you do do not engage with it when you see it on the map as you're going through the gameplay, you will be able to double back and complete things later in the game. Now, one thing I strongly recommend is as you're going through the main story, you also focus on some of the additional assignments that you're going to see because not only are they going to give you the ability to learn new spells that are really helpful, those spells also are required to complete certain things later in the game. Now, as all of you know, you have four houses to choose from when you jump into this game. You have Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. And I know for a lot of you out there, you already have your house predetermined. And another question you had was, do the answers during the sorting hat ceremony have an impact on the house that the hat chooses for you? And the answer is yes, but the good news is that no matter what house the hat chooses for you, you will have the ability to override that decision and pick whichever house that you like. So for those of you that want to be Slytherin, and no matter what or Hufflepuff, whatever it may be, you can choose anything you want. Another great feature is that you have full wand customization. Now I know you can link your WB account to the game and import a wand that you may have designed online. But for those of you that have no desire to do that or you just haven't done it as yet, you can create your own wand in the game, obviously. You can see here there are so many different choices. They also walk you through the strengths and weaknesses of different wands you may choose. And as I've mentioned in previous videos and as the game has stated, once you choose your house and you choose your wand as well, those are locked in for the rest of your gameplay for that character. So take your time, enjoy it, and if you have any questions whatsoever, please let me know. A few more things real quick, my friends, and I'm going to start to wrap this up. Now, I'm going to be doing a standalone video on different gear you can pick up in the game. But in the meantime, I wanted to talk about the transmog system that this game has, and it's absolutely amazing. So every single piece of item that you pick up in the game, it is immediately put into a transmog library. So that way you can change any further item you pick up to have the look of something that you enjoy more. So as most of you know, when it comes to a game like this, as you progress, obviously you're going to be picking up stronger and better gear this way you can change the look of the gear to anything you want let's say from a previous item that you got early on in the game and the best thing is there is no cost to do it whatsoever you can switch things and customize your character anytime you want 
Another question a lot of you had is, does the difficulty that you choose in the game have an impact on the amount of XP that you earn? And the answer is no. Regardless of your difficulty, that will not change the XP earned for, let's say, completing a mission or a side quest. The only impact it will have is on the actual difficulty of the gameplay itself. But other than that, you will earn the exact amount of XP no matter which difficulty you choose. One final thing I'd like to talk about today is the Room of Requirement. Now, that does take some story progression to get to. And while this is the type of game, in my opinion, you really want to take your time and enjoy, I do suggest you try to get to that as soon as you can because it will help your game play out a lot. I believe it's after the 16th main mission, which I have not gotten to as yet. I believe it's after the main mission where you get your broom. And so for me in my gameplay, my intent is to get to that mission, get the broom, get to the room of requirement. And once I have that stuff set, then I'm just going to take my time, cruise around the open world. Let me know how you're going to play this game my friends and as always if you have any questions comments or feedback please let me know with all that being said i'm going to start to wrap this up and leave you with a little bit of gameplay footage and as i mentioned at the beginning of this thing if you happen to be new here feel free to hit that subscribe or join button if you enjoyed this you could hit that like button as well but most importantly take care of yourselves be kind to each other and we will talk to you soon thanks again everyone <laughs> we should walk around a bit more Perhaps today is the day I finally pick one. Are we weakening him at all? Keep at it! We have to rest them! Protagon! It's ready on the was trying to beat him at his own game. And let him do more of it. Protego. Look, he's buttering. Took him long enough. 